So this is one of my favorite units to do in science because we're focusing on how temperature affects physical changes and chemical changes. I have got a ton of stuff on the desk tonight. Just look at all that stuff. So we're gonna start over here with physical changes and how temperature affects the change in state of water from solid to liquid to gas. Why is that dish empty? Well, that's because the water vapor is gas in the air and it's invisible and we can't see it. As water evaporates and changes into a gas, it starts to fill the room. Water can condense, water vapor can condense and form tiny droplets. Let's see if we can focus, focus, focus. There we go. See down here on this cold cup, there's some water droplets that are starting to form on the outside. That's because water is condensing or turning back into a liquid on the outside of this cup. Inside the cup, we've got water in a solid state that as temperature is being added, is melting and changing into a liquid. So we can observe all three forms of water as a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Now there's one other way that liquid can change into a gas, and that is boiling. I've got a pot of water, flame is on, I'm adding heat to the water, it is boiling, and you can see steam rising above the boiling water. Now that steam is not evaporation, that's actually water vapor that has condensed already, but quickly evaporates again back into the air. Now in the water, I am cooking some pasta. Oh, there we go. Almost ready, we're cooking some pasta. So that's a form of chemical change. Cooking is a chemical change, change affected by temperature. Another chemical change is rusting. Over here are some rusty nails and rusty tools. Be careful of rusty nails, please. That actually can be very, very dangerous. You need to have a shot if you step on a rusty nail. So you can see that these nails have rust on them, and if I rub that nail, ugh, see all that rust coming off on my finger? We'll get more into that and we'll talk more about the physical properties of rust and how because this is a chemical change, the physical properties of rust are different from the physical properties of the iron that it came from. Next, we're gonna look at burning. So I've got some matches, I have a candle, and of course over here, I'm burning some fuel to add temperature to my water to boil it. And kind of the same thing is happening over here. As the candle is burning, the solid wax in the candle is turning to a liquid, which boils off as a vapor. Now we don't see it as boiling because we don't see the bubbles coming off, but the liquid is turning to a gas. Careful, Mr. Ted, you're gonna burn your finger. Is turning to a gas and right there, you're seeing a chemical reaction happening between the gases from the candle and the oxygen in the atmosphere. By adding heat to something flammable, like a piece of paper, we can start a chemical change which changes the paper. And instead of paper, now we have ash and smoke. We have new materials that weren't there before. We can't really see the smoke. Oh, there's a little bit of smoke, there we go. And the ash has different physical and chemical properties than the paper that used to be there. That's a black powder. This isn't black powder, that's a piece of paper. It's actually an index card. But this black powder, this ash, is different as a result of chemical change. So chemical changes can completely change one substance into a new substance. And then over here, yuck. Yeah, you guys are familiar with this because I've had these pictures up for a few days now, decaying. So I've had this piece of fruit and you can see it's just starting to slump down. Blech. It's turning brown. That apple is turning brown. Look at all the browning that's going on over there. That's all evidence of decay. Now decaying 
and rusting aren't affected too much by temperature. So we won't be looking too much at how temperature affects rusting and decaying because it doesn't very much. We'll be focusing most of our investigations on burning, cooking, and changes in the state of water. So that's how we're going to investigate how temperature affects physical change and chemical change.